Hey folks, um, here's a little helpful video on the beginning part of 222 server vulnerabilities. We're going to do some stuff to kind of find some weaknesses in a server. And then later on in this unit, we're going to learn how to stop those weaknesses and prevent um, the hacks from happening. So you're going to read the beginning and do all that stuff with your vocab and whatnot. Um, but I wanted to show you a little something about forceful directory browsing. People do this all the time. Heck, I even do it sometimes when I don't want to go around and search for something else. Like if I was looking at um, a teacher's site and it said like chapter two and it had all this stuff, then I would assume if I needed to see chapter three instead of going all the way around and going back to Google and searching, I'd just change the two to a three and see what works. Um, you should have things to stop that unless it was... Um, linked but sometimes they don't so you gotta we gotta we're gonna try out some forceful browsing in this um, thing and then we're gonna learn how to stop forceful browsing later so one thing that's weird here is when you log into your virtual machine when you spin up you are on the login machine okay and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be testing some things on a web server which is a machine we're going to open up inside our machine, which is weird. It's very Inception-like, but you can tell the difference with which one you're on. Your normal machine has nothing up here. When you get inside the web server, you should notice something that looks like this at the top. You'll notice which machine you're on. The other way you can tell is look at the IP addresses. Your machine has 172.30.06, theirs says 172.30.0.15 for the web server. So we'll kind of go through that. Um, so yeah, I think you'd be able to do this. Um, so we can first just browse to our um, other machine that we're, we can open up later, but right now we're just going to browse to it by typing its IP address. Remember, sometimes um, you can know the URL code like amazon.com but if you knew the IP address for it you could just type that in instead so 172.30.0.15 look it says hello world so we got to it um, now this says type in the same thing but slash hidden directory one my file txt um, so we go back here Bad you can't copy paste that thing. Um, I'm going to pause for a sec while I type that in so you don't have to watch me type it. Okay, so I typed this in and we'll see what happens. Now you wouldn't have known that, but look what it does. Oh man, right to their hidden directory, you can find the site, the user's name, and a password. They This is not something you could get to from the regular website we just typed in that said hello world there's no link to it so if you knew their directory structure you could get to it heck maybe what if there's more things in hidden directory one right um and what if i just took off this and i didn't want to find that file exactly Ooh, i can see something else what's this my other file Right? So I didn't have to know that, oh man, we found someone else in their Facebook or Funbook account. Oh, look at that password. Um, so, you know, we just typed in, we just changed that to look at the directory and found some stuff. What if, what if I assumed, wait, if they have a hidden directory one, do they have a hidden directory two? Otherwise, why would you name it that? Um, and look at this, error. Um, the resource you're looking for has been removed, temporarily unavailable, and then it gave you all sorts of info, including the physical path for this. Um, it tells you where it went, so that's a little too much information for them to give me on an error. I'll kind of go into that later, but it was showing. Um, did I do that with one? Oh, that was with two. So. With two, you didn't get there. But with one, we already did get there. Um, and then we could find other stuff. So that's something you can do. That's called forceful browsing. And sneaky people do it all the time. Okay, so you want to watch out. Now what we're going to do is hop into our virtual machine. So you start to see this symbol whenever you're in the machine, in the machine, 
which gets kind of crazy. So we do this by going to, and you'll do this in a ton of lessons, so we need to kind of get this. So you go to Connections. We'll open Target Windows 01, which is the name of our machine in the machine. And we're connecting into our web server. You can tell up here that you're in the web server. If you want to go back to your other machine, you just wait till it loads here. We shrinky dink it down. Now I'm on my normal machine. But if I want to go back, now I'm on my web server. So you basically got access into another computer. And you can go through these steps and try to look at, try to get to look at what file system they were able to exploit. So if we go down here, oops, can I move this thing? Hold on. All right, I opened the file thing. I couldn't get to it earlier, but now I can. Um, and it, it kind of wants us to look for the, um, look at the files we were just forcefully browsing to from the outside. Because here we were on an outside computer browsing into the web server. Now we're going to look at it from the inside. Um, so we logged into our server, the one we just went to by its IP address, and um, we're going to go to local disk C. Okay, so we're in here. I want to go to local disk C right here. And it said that most of your internet stuff um, would be in INET pub and www root. So internet publishing, I think it's called. That's what it's short for. There we go. Now you can see what we were able to look at using our forceful browsing. There's a hidden directory with those things that we saw. Um, there's logs. There's history. There's temp. There's index. This, I bet, was the hello world. Oops. I don't want to do that. Huh. No. Oh, well. Hold on. Close that. All right, so you can kind of get an idea of the structure of what we might have been able to get to. Um, so how do those um, contents of that folder relate? If you open up hidden directory, we were able to get into those files from the outside because they weren't protected. Um, so I wonder if we jump back to our other machine. Oops. Like take a step back. I wonder if we could get into like their uh, their log files. So let's shrinky dink this down and open up that Chrome browser again and do 172. Okay, let's go to this. Okay, and instead of going here, what if we did um, instead of hidden directory one? If I knew they had a file called logs. Can I get to it? Oh, you can. I shouldn't be able to get in here. But I'm kind of using, this is where someone on the inside could get into all sorts of stuff they shouldn't, right? I could. May, I got into here. I just got into here where I can look at their logs. Maybe I can get into history too. So I'm going to see what all I can get into since I'm, you know, and then you could open up log files inside there, maybe history. Eh, some aren't allowed, but yeah, you can see how knowing what their setup is like allows you to get in and mess around and get places you shouldn't. So that's kind of cool. Um, you could try to get into any of these you want. Maybe you can get a mail route or temp or WW route. Um, so anyway, that's kind of that should get you here. Um, answer the questions up through nine. Hopefully that helped you understand the weird computer in a computer. When I look up here, I know that I am in this computer. I'm in the server. And when I shrink it down or close it, this guy, since there's no blue thing at the top, now I'm in this machine. And it's kind of weird to keep track of, but we're going to do a lot of this in this unit. So the more you get used to it, the better. All right, hope that helps, and we'll continue on after 9. Get your notebook all filled out, and then we'll continue on starting on log files later. All right, talk to you later, people.